Hi everyone, my name is uh, Brandon Ray, and I am uh, the lovely choice for for the uh, Facebook Live video today. Going to tell you a little bit about my story, and uh, hopefully I don't mumble too much. Uh, I want to focus. I, I want to focus more on the recovery side of it, but I will get into a um, little depth into some more stories just to, so you understand where I came from. Um, like I said, uh, my name is Brandon Ray, Brandon Scott Ray. I was uh, I was born in uh, South Jordan, Utah. Um, I was uh, one of the first, uh, well, I was the first boy born in Jordan Valley Hospital, the third baby ever. Um, I grew up uh, in a in a loving home. I mean, uh, it was. I mean, I had siblings. I was the youngest um, out of two boys and one girl. Um, my parents did divorce when I was young. I was seven years old. Um, and that's where the uh, the trouble started for me in my life. Uh, unfortunately, I had a older brother, um, the next older one. He uh, he him and his friends thought it was funny to get me high when I was seven years old, um, smoking marijuana, um, you know, drinking alcohol, uh, a little bit of hallucinogens, and uh, you know, at that time, I I thought I was awesome too. I had uh, the older guys cheering for me and laughing at me, and you know. Uh, what more could a little brother want? And, uh, you know, that kind of spurred me into a, a growth to think that drugs and everything were the greatest thing in the world. Um, I, uh, you know, that, that slowly, you know, stopped over a couple years' time. Um, but it was the perfect storm for me growing up um, around drugs. I, uh, I, I had a really good friend that I grew up with my whole life, and his father, I, uh, was a old hippie so there was a cabinet with uh, as many drugs as we wanted um, and I mean you name the drug it was there that was uh, you know that was horrible um, looking back at the time I thought it was amazing but you know so throughout my uh, formidable years of growing I I was doing a lot of drugs um, living fast and you know never thought I'd make it till 30 and I was proud of that and so, uh, you know, that went on for quite a few years. Uh, I, I was 16 years old when I uh, ended up getting uh, injured. I won't mention what the injury is. It's very, it's a very odd injury, um, and it was horrible. And it was bad enough that the uh, doctor would uh, offer me anything I wanted. He would actually meet me at the pharmacies and write the prescription right then and there. Um, you know, this was before the uh, uh, epidemic of painkillers really was being recognized. And so uh, I thought I was set. You know, when I first started taking opiates, it was like uh, I, like what people say. I, I had arrived. I, uh, I worked at Cisco Food Service and, the, the, you know, it was peace rate. The more fast you go, the, the more money you made. And uh, I those painkillers I mean uh, they have the opposite effect on me they give me energy and and uh, I feel great you know I don't feel anything so it really started to pick up steam around then it was it was terrible I would you know taking like 40 to 50 uh, pills a day you know with acetaminophen and I'm not sure how my liver body survived that um, you know and that went on for till I from when I was 16 till I was about 22 and that was the the golden year um, my doctor decided to cut me off and uh, there was no help offered or anything I didn't know where to turn and I really didn't care to get sober at the time but you know when I was 22 that's when I I started turning the streets and uh, started really committing crimes um, for the oxys you know and uh, I you know of course you know within that year I started doing heroin and um, started using a needle and my life went from you know bad to extremely worse then um, when I was 22 it's the first time I set foot in a jail um, and I'm 30 I'll be 36 on the 16th of this month and um, the la the from when I was 22 till now has been kind of a, a roller coaster of craziness um, you know over those years I've uh, I've, you know, I've done time, of course. Um, I've been through horrible situations. Uh, there was a three-month period in that time that I, I ended up getting shot three times in a drug deal, and uh, and I overdosed three times in that three months. Like, uh, I was dead on two of them. Uh, 
and it's it's crazy that I I didn't even quit after that. I mean, we <laughs> I went home and wrapped up the the uh, the wounds and started doing more drugs. Um, you know, it was it was a crazy time, uh, and I look back and I, I thought it was all normal. So you know, we'll focus on the recovery side of it now. I've you know, ever since I was younger, and I, uh, you know, in, in my 20s, I started realizing this was, something was wrong here. There was, there had to be a better way to live. Um, and I really started realizing um, my problem when my my family just, you know, couldn't do it with me anymore. Um, and you never realize how, how hard off you are inside your own head how crazy you are when that doesn't seem like a big deal to you um i thought they were the crazy ones i i mean i used to walk around and look at people in public and think they're high i mean there's no way they can go through life without drugs um and you know that that i battled getting sober and, and using and relapsing you know for years and years i uh you know i i did the whole got out of jail went and got high that same day and went back to jail that same day um, things like that. Uh, I, uh, I really, I really couldn't stop um, until I started to realize that uh, this was my problem, and nobody is gonna stop me. Nobody's gonna help me. Um, my family did what they could, and uh, and my my using has slowly over the years morphed into a very disgusting. Um, and terrifying thing. I, I mean, I've, I, I just can't con handle it anymore. Um, it's that allergic, you know. I, not only do I just when I start, I keep going, but I'm the uh, the tweaker on the corner that you see picking on themselves, asking for money when I'm using. I mean, I, I don't care about my appearance, my hygiene. Um, it's horrible, and it scares the living hell out of me. Um, I've, uh, you know, I, I have, I've been sober more than I've been using over the last 10 years just um, from sh doing time um, I did drug court and I I did that in one year straight no sanctions got it done and uh, relapsed you know I thought I was so cool that I didn't get any sanctions but looking back I uh, that it was always in the back of my head I was going to use again um, you know I've been learning a lot over the years um, and uh, this time getting sober has been you know, every time is always, of course, different. Um, I've always learned, you know, had something to hold on to that was tangible and learned from every relapse, fortunately. This one has been the best. Um, you know, I've I met my wife four years ago, and I realized I didn't want to lose her. I realized that she want, makes me want to be a better man in, in so many ways. And, you know, I realized the life I could have with her. And so I... Before I went to Wasatch Crest, I I made a decision to turn myself into a detox because, and I've never done that before. It's always been the cops taking me away, um, and fortunately I didn't pick up any new new criminal charges either. And so I, you know, I got sober. Um, I went to uh, detox the eighth of January of this year, and I got to uh, Wasatch Crest on the tenth of January. Um, and it's a funny story. I didn't want to go somewhere where Mark was, Mark Turner. And, you know, I just had these reservations in my head that I didn't like him from another treatment center. But it, it was one of those God things that it all turned out to be awesome. You know, I, I realized what I was thinking about him was really stupid. And he's a, he's a great dude and he just wants the best for me. And so it was, it turned out to be very humbling. Um, man, we had a good, me and him had a good laugh out of it. But Los Edge Crest... Oh, it's the best treatment I have ever been through. Um, and it, it's funny because it's not hugely what they do. I mean, the, the, the staff there is great, but it's it's what they don't do. Um, they just, they kind of let us learn our own thing. I don't know. It's it's a it's a laid back atmosphere is what I saw right when I got there. And it, it scared me, but I realized it, after doing multiple treatment centers that it, it fostered a better community among us. And we all... I mean, everybody was on a great learning path for themselves, and it was amazing to see, and it it helped me um, to to realize what I wanted to do. And I mean, I was a 
I was a balling baby when I first got there. Um, and uh, it's amazing the the transformation that can happen so quick. I mean, even though I've been trying for so many years to get this thing, I never, uh, I never felt like I needed help ever. Um, my ego is huge. Um, I feel like I, I can do everything by myself and I, and I can do a lot of things, but this is something I've really had to concede this time that I, I cannot do by myself. Um, and so what I'm doing different this time is, uh, I do have a sponsor. Um, I've done that sponsor thing before, but I'm actually telling him the truth this time. You know, that's a major difference. <laughs> Who would have thought? Um, I'm, uh, I am actually, you know, making it a meetings. I'm, I'm consciously making an effort to change um, things about myself and recognize things about myself that are just not serving me. And part of that growth has been also uh, marriage counseling for me and my wife. It's it's shown me that you know there's some things and habits I do that are horrible, and I never you know I always was hard headed about it. But looking at that for her has made me open up more to looking at it in every aspect of my life. Um, I, I need to constantly remind myself I am not the center of the earth and I am, you know, no, I'm not better than anybody. I'm not lower than anybody. So, um, so yeah, I mean, Wasatch Crest is a big help. I, I love that place and I love the staff there. Um, uh, my sponsor actually Randy got for me and so I am truly grateful for that. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's my story. Um, you know, I, I'm doing, uh, you know, medical things as well to try to solve my uh, relapsing, like uh, sleep studies. One, I have a sleep study tonight. That's also, you know, on the on the menu. But um, I will have permanent life uh, scars from from my experiences. Uh, you know, from uh, the drug deal that went bad, and my left leg is completely numb, um, and it it will never come back. I've I lost. I had some atrophy in the muscle there. Um, and my body's covered in a lot of scars from picking and, and, you know, uh, bullets and BBs. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, I do have a constant reminder, but I wouldn't change a dang thing about it. I, uh, I love who I am today and, uh, and I, I don't know. I just love getting involved. So that's my story. Um, since I think it's cool, I'll show you guys. I got to do a tattoo last night. It's, uh, Link from Zelda. Hopefully everybody likes it. It was spur of the moment. I just kind of wanted to do it and I did it. So yeah, I uh, love you all and uh, please contact me if you have any questions. I'm, I'm, I love you all and I'm willing to help anybody. Thank you so much.